But the piece about this I want to show you is that she's upside down. And many times that's how we breathe. We, we breathe through our chest. We go, <sighs> right? We have, we have quick breaths. And what I want you to do, and this is, you know what? We don't care about our tummies right now. When you breathe, my friends, I want you to get that breath of God right inside of you to the very tip of your lungs and go, <sighs> and you get your stomach, right? I want it to go right into your tummies. Remember that when you're driving. Remember that before you grab your coffee, if you can, you know, before the coffee. Remember to take as deep a breath as you can. And then, uh, 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 isn't it? Uh, uh, I saw you all doing this a minute ago. Don't try and trick me. You were all yawning just a second ago. All you going, uh, is she done yet? No. When you yawn, it's peculiar because the pecunious is initiated. And when the pecunious is initiated, it means that you've cooled off your head. You're more aware. You've got focus. Your body has relaxed. You're more compassionate to the other person. So when you go to Tim Hortons to get your coffee, yawn about six times before you go in, and the line won't be quite as aggravating. <laughs> and when somebody says to you, oh, am I keeping you up? You say, no, uh, I'm initiating the precunious, which is very peculiar, but yeah. Anyways, yawn, my friends. I tell you, that really will help. By the way, there aren't many girls that go out to see their horses with their dress and high heels on, but my Michaela does, yes. I just want to tell you a little bit about the horses quickly, and then I'll be at my end. These are probably the most important things that have happened to me in my life and that have helped me to recover. You see, I could not go out with a group of people because the noise, the crowds, people being close to me would upset me. But you know, every day I had a purpose and that purpose was to go out to those horses and to care for them. And they became my community, a very quiet, very steadfast community. Do you know that they don't judge? They didn't ask me, Sharon, where are you working now? Why aren't you working? It's been three years since your accident. Can't you work now? They never asked me. They didn't criticize, condemn, or compare me to anyone. They didn't ask me, Sharon, what's in your bank account now? Because <laughs> there wasn't anything, right? I'm going, oh, yeah. And you know what? When these fellows have a little bit of an argument, they don't hold on to it. You ever notice that we do that? I don't know about you guys, but I used to, and I still do on occasion. Well, do you know that she did that to me? Six years ago, my brother lied to me. Right? We hang on to that. We go on about it. We tell people about it. We like to go on to the drama about it. See, the horses, they don't do that. It's just a silent presence. And they actually support each other. See, they're nipping at each other's withers to kind of give them a little scratch. And when one is down, when one is down, others stand around to protect him. It's kind of like you guys have done for me. You've stood around. You've been in my presence. You've prayed for me. Standing there in that presence is what others will do for you. And that's what the horses do. The horses are amazing creatures. They are prey animals. So right now, if we were to go into their presence, we are predators. We look, act, and smell like predators. But the horses know whether that cheetah is hungry right now or whether that cheetah's had a good lunch. If they want water, they gotta know that the lion has been well fed before they go up to the water tank. They mirror us. So if you walk into the round pen with one of my horses and you're angry, you'll soon see my horse running around, feeding off your energy and moving really fast because they're scared too. But if you come into my place, if you go into that round pen with a single horse and you've grounded yourself and you're being authentic, who you are, and it doesn't matter what you've done or what you think you're going to do, but who are you in this moment? Who are you? And if you can relay that to the horses, they are calm and in your presence and will help to mirror you, to give you info, to tell you about yourself, insights that you maybe wouldn't even know. Okay, there's the dog, and there's the daughter that gave me the dog. Yes, this is Odin. Odin is a bulldog and a boxer cross. And he's the cutest thing on earth, although on Christmas Day, I've got to tell you just about, well, anyways, you know what I was thinking, right? Mm -hmm. 
Dogs have been used for therapy for years, but did you know that in 600 BC, the Greeks were using horses as therapy? See, science has proved that in the presence of the horse, more than any other animal, that the outside of the horse is really great for the inside of the person. It helps us to find that focus. But science has told us that if you came to my house, and we walk down to the barn, and I have a horse in the barn, when you walk in, your heart rate might go up, but once you're inside and you're standing there with me talking and that horse is in our presence, your heart rate will come down. It will start to fall. So will your pulse rate, your blood pressure. And then if you actually move closer to the horse, it'll fall even more. The blood pressure will come down. You'll start to ease the tension in your neck and in your body and to relax. And if you get so close to the horse that you're able to touch it, you're able to actually brush that horse, you actually connect at that point. Now, this isn't something I made up, my friends. It is research. They took 10 electrodes, put them on a person, electrodes on a horse, and the brain waves actually matched on the horse and the person. Horses actually changed the brain. Linda Tellington Jones does T-touch. And that's where you go up to the horse and you do just these little circles on them. One of the things that we're going to be doing at the farm is to invite all of you or anyone that would like to come to do meditation and prayer with the horses. So you will sit there and actually be able to sit in prayer in the silence with the horses. And then we would have you actually moving closer to being able to touch the horses. And guess what happens? And I didn't even know this, right? Because... I believe that I was given the grace to go to those horses. I had them for the reason that God helped me to fall off that horse, right? God is the messenger. And the message was, Sharon, slow down. Your brain's moving too fast. It still does at times, Doug says. But when I'm near the horses, the beta, alpha, theta, delta waves and both sides of my brain are in coordination and work with the horses. When I am in this phase, when I have all four of those waves in harmony and both sides of my brain, it's like someone that had been sitting in meditation, if you're doing deep meditation and had been there an hour. I can have you walk into my barn to touch a horse and you can be in meditation and have all those four waves going and both sides of the brain, just like that. And then you can go out and walk on my helicopter landing pad. No, I haven't got that yet. I want the helicopter, right? Uh, I don't want many things, world peace and a helicopter. No, <laughs> that's not why I put it there. This is the labyrinth, as you know. But I want to tell you that when I take a horse through a labyrinth, science has also proved that the horse has the theta waves, um, the waves that actually indicate that the horse is making decisions. So he is working with you, actually helping you, igniting that, that wisdom that is within you, that part of you that is I am. Come see us over at the farm. The horses are so meaningful, but you can catch me online. Kath has the website up and has a, a recordings and different things that you can come and see us online. Just, and if you can't come online, Glenn's going, I haven't got a computer yet, Sharon, then come see me. We can do the meditation. We can walk the labyrinth. We can have a coffee by my pond. There are three or four ways. You can also just buy yourself for that. I want you to know that if you go to the website, if you click on this, you can listen to this, and it's a recording of my voice. And you're going right now. I think we've heard enough of you, Sharon. <laughs> right? Okay, I'll get it. Um, but you can listen to this, and it does give you a few more tips as to what helps to find that creating harmony within, that I am. It is my faith. It is my faith that got me through this. You see, what really is within us is what's holding us up. We can't even breathe on our own. God is within us. God's spirit is with us. And that really is what's holding me up. That really, that faith, that belief in God and that there's something greater than I am. Faith is being sure of what I hope for and certain, certain of even what I cannot see. I give thanks, my friends, that I kept that faith and that you helped me to keep it as well. And that I'm able to now stand before you to do a wee recording to others and to help them to know God and God's grace and love 
from within. Be sure to take a deep breath. Yawn a few times if you could. And many blessings. Thank you. Yeah.